This video is going to possibly be a little bit of a longer one, but what we're going to be doing in it is making our first HTTP, yeah, HTTP request from our game. So what this is going to do is going to take our JSON object that we create, kind of send it to our web API, and our web API is going to then add it to the server. So it's going to look like an entry like this. So I'm going to go ahead and clear it out and make sure our database is empty, which it now is. And we can now begin. So here's everything that we're going to be doing. So first off, we do need to add some dependencies to our build.cs, and those are HTTP, JSON, and the JSON utilities. So go to our build.cs at the very end, do a comma, do HTTP, JSON, and JSON utilities, just like so. And I'm going to make sure I spelled that right. All right. Then control S to save and close it out. Now let's head into our header. And there's some includes that we have to do. And those are HTTP, HTTP.h and online JSON serializer. Now I'm going to include this in the header file. And that's going to be used for when we create our process, process request complete uh, bind as well as we want to store our HTTP um, variable or pointer in the header file for accessing it later. So let's go ahead and include HTTP.h. And up here, let's do a separate protected section. We're going to do, let's see, the type of it is FHTTP module. So F HTTP module, I do HTTP. Then in the constructor, we're going to do HTTP equals I HTTP module get. Like so. I or F? Uh, it's F. I was thinking it was I for some reason. So there we go. Now I want to do this in my init lobby handling. So now we're going to construct the JSON object. So to do that, make a t shared pointer of F JSON object, then we have to make it shareable. So it's a t shared pointer of F JSON object, and we'll call it JSON object equals make shareable new f json object. And now we can add the fields. So json object, let's do set number field. And then you can see it takes in two parameters. So if we look at our database, here we have the server ID, pretty much the list of the table. So we're first one to the ID, so we're just going to set it to zero. So server ID, zero. Let's make six of these, two, three, four, five, and six. So server ID, IP address, server name, map name, current players, and max players. Now I'm going to by default, set max players to five, current players to one. I want to change map name, server name, and IP address to set string field. And then give them the corresponding info. So by default, I'm going to do 127.0.0.1 for the server name, test server name. And the map name is just going to be test map name, like so. So now that we have that, we can move on and we need to make a JSON writer. So we're going to make a T shared ref of T JSON writer. So T shared ref of type T JSON writer of the type T char. This can be JSON writer. And we're going to set that equal to a T JSON writer factory. And we're going to pretty much have it be the reference to our JSON string. So above it, 
we're going to do an f string and it's going to be json string so we're going to do t json factory or t json writer factory it's a template then we're going to do create then the address or a reference to our json string just like so next we have to make a t shared ref of an i http request and this is going to be our request and everything that we kind of think of it like our post request for example so make a t shared ref of type i http request and i'm going to call it request then we have to create the request so i http request create or uh, Uh, what is it to create the request? I cannot remember. I've done this before, like I said, so I'm going to do a quick little cheat. Uh, it's from our HTTP module here. So it's HTTP create request, like so. So next up, we have to set some kind of parameters to it. So we set the URL, we set the verb, would be like post, get, and that sort of thing. Set the content type, and then the content. So it's going to be request, set URL, and the URL is going to be what we do in Postman here. So we can copy it and paste it in, or if you don't know the URL, just launch your master server, and it'll be this here. So it'll be that. Then our controller, which is API forward slash host. So forward slash API forward slash host. And that will match up with our, um, it'll fire our post request. So same thing as in JSON, capital H. So then we need to set the verb. So request set verb and we're doing a post request and after that we need to set the content type so request set header it's going to be of type text content type is equal to text application or slash json like so so next we need to set our content as string. So request set content as string and the content is our JSON string. Then we can do request process request. Now one thing we can do is we can actually go and bind a request to make a function get called whenever we actually uh, complete the request. So request on process request complete dot dot bind u object. First parameter is this. Next one is a or a Nazi zombie beacon host object. Then the function name. So let's create that function. I'm going to do void on process request complete. And it's going to take in three parameters. And those types are fhttp request pointer, fhttp response pointer, and a boolean to dictate whether or not it was successful. So we have a request pointer. Call it request. Then our fhttp response pointer. Call it response. Then bool success. Let's move it over here and create it. Like so. And if success, otherwise, we're going to print out a message if it was successful. So UE log. 
HTTP request success. Then I want to print it out, our return value. I do percent %s, then a pointer to response, get content as string. I'm going to do kind of the same thing here, but HTTP request failed, like so. Okay, now we can bind the process request, or on process request complete to our new function. And I messed that up. Okay, so now we should be able to build. Let me check if I missed anything. No, I think that's all. So I'm going to go ahead and compile and give it a test. And our Web API is running. Can't wait to figure out what I messed up on. So hopefully it does complete. What it's going to return is that random integer that we generate as the server ID. So cooperative, post game, check the log, and it failed here on our It's acting like that was not set. Let's check the log. So data is null. Oh, let's check the host controller. That is all still set up correctly. That means we missed something in our HTTP request. So I want to go through and do a quick check. So we go through, we set all of our fields to make our JSON writer. I never serialized it, so that, that would be why. So we do. F JSON serializer serialize then the object which is JSON object then what we want to uh, serialize so JSON string or no, JSON string and then the factory I think actually oh dang which was it no, it is the JSON object and the JSON writer. Okay. That to shared ref. And now we should be good to go. So the content was never serialized, so it messed up when it went to go send it. But we should still be running. So compiled. Now let's give it a test. Post. Okay. All right. It's acting like it is not going through. So let's check the workbench. And nothing. Because that was also a very fast compile. Okay, I want to test one more time. I'm going to restart the web API. Triple check all the info. Okay. Oh, and there we go. So I guess it was just a weird issue when it first uh, we first had null data being passed to it. So now you can see HTTP, HTTP request success and then the value that it returned. So that means all of our content here, so test server name and test map name, should now be in our log, I mean our data table. So I refresh it, test server name, test map name, server ID being 27133 something something else. Yeah, 271, yep, the ID is the same. And now we can uh, 
do one more test with it. And we should get another ID. Yep, we got that. Back on the workbench, refresh. And here we are. So now, whenever we go and host our game, it goes through and called, makes the call to our web API, passing in all the information that we have in our JSON object, and it sends it to our database from there. And then it returns the server ID that we randomly generate. So what we're gonna have to do real quick is make a new variable here. I'm gonna call this one, it's gonna be an int server ID. By default, I'm gonna set it to negative one. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do server ID equals f string from int. It's gonna be response get content as string. Now what's the issue here? Wait, what am I doing? Let's see. I'm trying to remember what it is to convert a string to an integer. No, I can't remember. But we'll do with that in the next video. So what we're going to be doing is just storing our server ID that gets created from our web API. And that will be our identifier for when we go to do things such as updating our, um, our entry in the database. So I'll see you then.